Welcome back to my hardcore nuzlocke of Pokemon Emerald only using single stage Pokemon. In the last episode, we picked up a few new encounters in Minin and Illumise, and then took on Rival 3 and Watson. Both fights were a lot of fun and involved quite a few close calls, but we managed to make it out of the early game completely deathless. A ton of new routes, trainers, and encounters ahead of us. Let's do this. I quickly grab all the usual items lying around the surrounding routes and immediately head north where a bunch of new encounters open up. And would you look at that, leading off another episode with another encounter. The fiery path gives us Torkoal, which I am very excited about. I don't know why I like Torkoal so much, considering that on paper he doesn't perform super well in these games, but he's super bulky and has a fantastic ability. And while he may not be as good in the late game, he'll be very nice to have for the next few gyms. After picking up our new team member, I trek all the way back to Wismer Cave to get him some HP EVs while I level him up. I feel like this will be important for his success. Afterwards, I head back north to routes 112 and 113, making my way towards Falibur Town. And along the way, we run into our next encounter, Spinda. This may actually end up being the run where I actually have to use him. I did have a small chance of getting Skarmory instead, which would have been huge. I went back and forth before I started this run on whether or not I should ban him altogether, but I don't think he's good enough in these games to warrant it. And the chance to encounter it is so low that I just didn't bother. We didn't get lucky anyway, so we're still stuck with our token Spinda. Spinda is just not that great on paper, and I can't imagine it's any different in practice, but we'll find out. Our next encounter may be obtained, but there's actually some more stuff I'd like to go over here before we reach Falibur Town. It's time for a little Route Spotlight, featuring Route 113. Routes in Pokemon games can be similar to towns and cities in that some are very memorable for one reason or another, and some are not. Route 113 is definitely one of the memorable ones from the Hoenn region, and for more reasons than one. I'm sure everyone remembers it it for the aesthetic and the overall atmosphere, and I really like that about it as well. A path of ash that constantly rains down from the mountain above. The little glass workshop halfway through the route is such a cool idea, allowing you to gather that ash as a resource for obtaining some of the coolest items in the whole game. And there's just something oddly satisfying about leaving a clean trail of grass behind you as you run through the route. But before you go about exploring the route in more detail and experience everything that it has to offer, a word of caution. I didn't just happen to randomly pick Route 113 to do a quick analysis on, just because it looks cool. In my opinion, this is one of the most dangerous routes in the whole game, and you should not take the trainer battles here lightly. The ones you'll want to watch out for in particular include the Bird Keeper at the end of the route, as well as all Ninja Boys. This Bird Keeper has a Swellow and a Skarmory, both of which are terrifying at this stage of the game. Steel types can always be annoying to deal with, and I'm pretty sure that Swellow's got double team. In Emerald, you also run the risk of a double battle here as well, which could potentially complicate things depending on how your team is currently constructed. Then there is of course the Ninja Boys on this route, both of which hide in those little soot piles and jump out at you if you get too close. The one next to the glass shop is really the one that I would completely avoid at all costs if you can. Three coughings with self-destruct. Not very cool. And the other one appears in a mandatory double battle off of one of the ledges, if you choose to go in that direction. He's got his own exploding bag of gas, and a ninjask as well to deal with. And that wraps up the Route 113 spotlight. Just something I wanted to bring up while I was here, because knowing which random trainers could potentially end your run, or at least make it a lot more difficult, is very valuable information to have. And we finally reach Falibur Town. Cool, someone just left $5,000 on the ground. After talking to Lynette and picking up the TM for Dig on Route 114, we head a little further south to run into our next encounter, Seviper. This is another weird one because I haven't had enough experience with it to get a good feeling of its capabilities. Judging what it can do on paper is even tough to say. It's a mixed attacker with a decent enough ability. It gets crunch along with a pretty wide array of coverage options as well, like Giga Drain, Flamethrower, and Dig slash Earthquake. I can see him being useful for Flannery and possibly elsewhere. Might be good against the evil team admins and leaders too. So Viper's stats are high enough that he'll definitely see some play for sure. I'm just not sure what to expect from him yet. With yet another new member added to the team, I make my way through the rest of Route 114 and reach Meteor Falls where we can get some more story in. I really like this route overall too. The trainers aren't much, but I just like the transitions between the lake, grassy area, and then back into the mountains again. It just sounds like the kind of place I would like to spend my time in. Finally inside Meteor Falls so we can listen to these goons talk about a rock they stole from a guy named... Cosmo? 
Seriously, is that just a nickname or do your parents hate you? It is somewhat amusing to me that we are required to travel halfway across the Hoenn region just to see that little bit of dialogue, only to have to trek all the way back to where we started, on the other side of Mount Jimny. At least Meteor Falls itself is a really cool place with a really cool theme too. Fortunately for us though, we didn't just come all the way out here to mash through a few text boxes, because here at Meteor Falls we can grab our fourth encounter of the episode in Soul Rock. And this is arguably the best encounter of the episode as well, although it's pretty close alongside Torkoal. For anyone that has been watching my videos since the beginning, you already know the crazy roller coaster relationship I've had with this thing. Started the channel off with a Pokemon tier list for Emerald, and Soul Rock was marked as one of the worst in the game. However, my opinion has drastically changed since then, especially after my worst encounters run I did not too long ago. Soul Rock has a super weak typing in the later stages of the game. But in the mid game, he's fantastic. Stab, Rock Throw, and Confusion are very helpful for Flannery and Winona, while his typing is great against Norman and Maxi's ace camera up as well. Soul Rock will fall off sometime after Winona, but the impact he brings to the table right now cannot be ignored. After training up my new teammates and making that trek back to where I came from that I mentioned earlier, it's time to hop on a cable car and head up to the top of Mount Chimney. I swear. There was a time where I would see one every other time I went up here, which is apparently crazy because it's a fairly rare event to occur. Jesus, Archie's Poochiana is moving so fast it looks like it's about to take off into space. I honestly wasn't sure if there would be a boss fight in this episode with how long it normally takes to get from Mauville to Lava Ridge, but hey, here we are. I don't normally do team reviews for Maxi and Archie because they aren't usually a big deal most of the time, but I will say this is one of the more challenging team leader fights, so let's do a quick one. You can see I pretty much have a full team of six, so I'm definitely over prepared for this one. Better safe than sorry in a hardcore Nuzlocke. I'm leading with Torkoal to take out Mightyana. Bite is special, which goes against Torkoal's lackluster special defense in this gen, but I'm not too worried about it. Torkoal shouldn't have any issues, but if he does, I can switch into Saviper or Sableye or anyone else for that matter. I'm sending in Torkoal first, so that camera will come out next and hopefully go for a Magnitude. From there, I'll switch into Soul Rock. Even if camera doesn't use Magnitude, it's basically a clean switch anyway, with Tackle and Ember both not being very effective against Soul Rock. Focus Energy is the scariest thing for sure, but I don't see Soul Rock having much of an issue. Cast Form will be the backup here with Water Gun. And finally, I'll send in Minin to take out Zubat. Zubat does have Bite, so it's not worth keeping Soul Rock in and risking a crit or something, even if he's at full HP. Saviper, so Sableye, and Cast Form are all backups for this fight. There's a good chance I won't really need them, but you never know. Maxi is up next. Let's do this. The fight starts, and I also just realized that Torkoal's White Smoke ability is also very nice to have against this Mighty Anna's Intimidate and Sand Attack as well. I start going for Body Slams while Mighty Anna uses the expected Bite. The incoming damage is right around where I expected, but I was anticipating Body Slam to hit a bit harder than it was. I knock Mighty Anna down to the red, but then Max uses a potion to bring him back up again. It feels like I'm getting a bit too low, but we do eventually get the Paralyze from Body Slam. I switch over to using Ember to see if that hits a little bit harder maybe? I think my Torkoal's nature reduces his physical attack stat, so Body Slam might not actually be the best here. After a second Ember, Mighty Anna finally goes down, and I didn't need a backup. Camerupt comes out, and so I switch into Soul Rock, anticipating that magnitude. However, Camerupt goes for the best possible move it could make against my team in Focus Energy. I really don't understand the AI in this game sometimes. I mean, unless this camera up is just programmed to use focus energy first no matter what, how in the hell does it not see a kill with magnitude, or even tackle for that matter? I guess my defense stat is pretty high, but still. Luckily, we don't get crit a single time, and Soul Rock has a fairly easy time taking camera up to down with rock throws. I do miss one after the potion comes out, but with the extra HP I got from the Orenberry, I was in pretty good shape. Maxi sends out his final Pokemon in Zubat, and so I switch into Minin just to be safe.
A quick spark takes it out with ease, and our first encounter with Maxi goes swimmingly. Maxi is one of those boss fights that, over time, you kind of take for granted a little bit just because of his level of difficulty. But especially with some of the later fights, his Pokemon can step up out of nowhere sometimes if he catches you sleeping. And with that, this episode is now over. Maxi and Team Magma have been handled, and we've acquired four more Pokemon to enhance our strategic options, some of which will be very helpful for the upcoming Flannery and Norman fights. In the meantime, as usual, please like the video if you liked it, and subscribe for more content like this. I really hope you guys are enjoying the series so far. That's it from me, I'll see you next time.